It's a pleasure to be here, and it's uh, gratifying to be able to share ideas uh, and this specific idea uh, in such a dynamic forum. Uh, just a quick note on where I'm coming from. Uh, my company is based on what I like to call a humanitarian entrepreneurship. This means that we aim to save lives through innovation, and that by using market forces, we hope to improve the lives of people in uh, the most vulnerable and poorest nations in the world. Um, so if any of you are in, in Africa or have been in Africa and have seen a bed net there, chances are that that came from, from my company. Um, but we're what we are much more than, uh, than our contribution to the fight against malaria. And what I would like to talk to you about today is our latest program uh, called Carbon for Water, an innovation at the nexus of public health and emissions reduction. But let's start with, with the problem. Along with malaria and along with respiratory infection, diarrhea is the leading cause of death among children under the age of five in sub-Saharan Africa. And Western province of Kenya, where we where our carbon for water program took place is no different. Uh, it's a population of four and a half million people. Uh, and, and this image here is taken at the latest cholera outbreak uh, in Western Kenya. Um, it's worth noting that really everybody in among the four and a half million people are exposed to this because so few in the Western province of Kenya have access to safe drinking water. No one ought to be drinking contaminated water. And one of the ways to treat your water is by boiling it. But that requires firewood. You can get that in one of two ways. It can be bought at ever-increasing prices, or it can be collected from, among others, the dwindling Kakamega forest. And Anselma here, nine years old, is doing just that. But I think Anselma ought to be able to go to school rather than, rather than collecting firewood. And even worse, Women and girls are reporting uh, of sexual violence, of men lurking in the forest. And the desperation for, so f uh, for fuel is often so great that some are engaging in transactional sex with the rangers just to get access to firewood. Add to that the indoor air pollution of burning wood inside your home to get safe drinking water. This is the, one of the leading causes of respiratory infection, which together with malaria and diarrheal illness, as mentioned earlier, form the top three killers of children under the age of five in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Now add to that the thinning of the forest and the carbon emissions as a result of burning firewood, and the price that you are paying for using biomass, collecting biomass, for treating water is indeed huge. <coughs> one of the uh, possible solutions to this is one of our innovations, Life Straw Family. This is a water filter that uh, filters water without the need for spare parts, electricity, or maintenance. Um, it can serve a very large family with safe drinking water for several years, and it meets the World Health Organization standards for um, higher standards for household water treatment. But this is not about the product. I personally believe that uh, developing a life-saving tool is not where the big innovation is. The big innovation is about getting it out to the people who need it the most. So here's what we did to beat that challenge and empower four and a half million people with the basic human right of safe drinking water. In May last year, together with, uh, in partnership with the Kenya Ministry of Health, we hired 8,000 people to go door to door to 900,000 houses and install in every house this water filter. This was a $30 million investment from, from our side to give water filters away for free, to install them for free, uh, teach the, uh, the usage for free, and if anything would, would break, we would uh, repair and service and maintenance it for free. So, how is that possible to make a private for-profit investment in, in distributing waters for, water filters for free? Well, it's possible because we can, uh, we can combine doing business and doing good and recoup the investment because 
As we educate people in the use of water filters and the reduced need to boil water, we can also measure how much water is filtered and how much less water is boiled and how much less firewood is burned. And this translates into a carbon emission reduction. And when that is verified by an independent auditor, we can have carbon credits issued. These carbon credits we are then selling to companies who want to offset their carbon footprint. And it is by selling these carbon footprints that we are able to distribute water filters to 4.5 million people for free. This creates an entirely new role for carbon finance. And there are several things that are highly unique with, with the program that we, that we developed. Uh, to begin with, uh, LifeStraw is the first ever water filter that was ever uh, registered on the carbon market. But more importantly, Carbon for Water is uh, the first program ever on the carbon market with measured health and development benefits. Second, this is absolutely sustainable. Not just because we have committed for a decade to maintain and fund this program, but more importantly, because the independent auditors have now verified that we have reduced 1.2 million tons of carbon emission in the first six months of our operation. And this clearly documents that it is a private, for-profit development and environmental program. And it has to be sustainable because governments can't keep throwing new money at old problems. And the need therefore arises for professional solutions to respond to some of the greatest challenges we're faced with. This is unique in scale. It's not only that this is the first um, uh, carbon program that is clearly linked to safe drinking water with, 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 with clear humanitarian co-benefits, uh, but this is five times larger than any other program ever registered under the gold standard voluntary market. And with 8,000 employees going to 900,000 households with, with water filters over the span of five weeks, this is one of the largest, if not the largest, investment ever in, in, um, in household drinking water in the developing world. Another uniqueness that has to be mentioned is that it offers a very important correction to one of the unfortunate elements of the carbon market that nations need to be developed and companies need to be polluting in order to be incentivized to clean up. And as a result of this, only 3% of the global carbon market actually goes via Africa or includes Africa. So the carbon for water here offers a very important correction to that. <coughs> the last of the uh, game-changing attributes that I want to mention is um, one that I find very important for uh, development agencies and traditional bilateral donors because this is about pay for performance. We are not issued a single carbon credit and we are therefore not paid a cent until we have documented and have independently verified how much water was filtered, how much less water was boiled, how much less firewood was burned. And to create that data platform, we issued all our health workers, which was half the workforce, 4,000 people, with a smartphone each, so that when they entered the home, we would collect the name of the person we gave the water filter to, her cell phone number, it was almost always a woman, the number of people per family, which made our data set more accurate than the national census, the GPS coordinate of that house, the barcode of the water filter, a photograph as, as, as evidence of delivery of the, uh, of the water filter, and all that would be uploaded in real time, and we would receive 35,000 files per day in real time that we would manage the campaign with. And that, combined with the semi-annual surveys, formed the platform for the external audit. This is the data rigor and a pay-for-performance structure that I think development agencies and traditional donors need to pay attention to. This image should be familiar to anyone who has worked in public health in East Africa. This is the data tracking board at your local health center. We're not at a point yet where uh, we can um, uh, clearly document the comprehensive health outcomes from our intervention. 
but we are getting the uh, early indications back from the district health officers that diarrheal illness is absolutely on the decline. And we're carefully tracking among the vulnerable groups the diarrheal illnesses, among HIV, the population living with HIV AIDS, among pregnant women, and among children under five. As we now, in 2012, are looking at two decades since the Rio landmark climate meeting in 1992, and knowing that delegations are meeting again in June to discuss the state of, of, of climate, it is with clear directive to think about ways how carbon offset can be coupled with sustainable development and poverty eradication. We want to be there with all the evidence from this first ever campaign that has delivered measurable health and development outcomes. As we look to the future with Carbon for Water, we're right now preparing for replicating this at a much larger scale so that in, in the not too distant future, we can talk about not how we created access to safe drinking water for a few millions, but how we did so for hundreds of millions. Thank you very much.